pronouncenames.com. Here's the official pronunciation. Fivos. Fivos. Excuse me? Fivos. 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 Hmm, thank you, sir. Never knew. Do we have the correct pronunciation of your name? Hmm, I kind of doubt it, madam. On your website, you have me listed as Newton Fancy. It's Nutton Fancy, as in the Nutton Fancy Project. Still cranking along after all these years. This is the subset called The Watch Show. Cool patches and stickers still available at nuttonfancybigcartel.com. By the way, I was kidding about her website. I don't know what website she has or even if she would have me on it. I highly doubt it. But yes, yeah, Nutton, not Newton Fancy. And it is Vivos. F-E-V-O-S, apparently. Not my pronunciation, which will be Phoebus. Maybe I'll go with the god of tactical kydex made in Israel, Phobus. Phobus, but we'll just go with Phoebus. I think most guys are calling it Phoebus. There you go, if you care. This is my Reef Master awesome. Dive Watch Tabletop Review. Terrible. The watch is pretty excellent. I like it. Not totally excellent. It's not totally excellent. There's, there are some things that I would change about it for sure. I think most of us would say that about every single watch we own. Isn't that the truth? You know, we all have our own aesthetics of what we like, what we dislike, SAWC requirements. But mostly, this is an excellent watch. Now, if you're new to the watch show, welcome. Thanks for clicking on the video. Subscribe to the Nut and Fancy Project. Please support the work. If you feel so inclined, go to nutandfancypatreon.com. That's where I got the money to buy these watches. I didn't go to Phoebus and go, hey dudes, uh, I'm a watch reviewer. I'll give you positive press if you give me some watches, maybe some money on the side. That goes on all the time with all reviewers, not just watch reviewers, gun, knife reviewers. It's rampant. My acronym to describe this process is third-party advertising. You think you're watching an objective review, you're really watching third-party advertising. No, I went out and used Patreon money, bought these watches. There you go. So I can say whatever I want about them. I'm not beholden to anybody. True independence, that's how it works. It is expensive though. Patreon link below if you care. Love the watches. Yes, they do have some downsides. There are going to be some rants in this feature length watch review. I do watch watch reviews in YouTube, YouTube and one of the things that annoys me is frequently they are very short. Okay, they go across the specifications, blah, blah, blah. I can get that from the manufacturer's website. Why do I need to watch a watch review in, in YouTube for that? If that's all you're gonna do and you're not gonna give opinion and say interesting crap, why do I need to watch your reviews? And so I pretty much have dialed out of reviewers like that. And they're short, they're like five, 10 minutes. Sometimes they're good and I'm like really into it and then he's like, okay, that's the end of the video, see ya. And I'm like, what? That's not this video. So if you're looking for something five minutes, just go to the manufacturer's website, Phoebus or Phoebus.com. It is a micro brand of watch of which I've learned a lot about lately. Research such brands as AV8. I reviewed some of those and I love AV8 brand. Awesome vintage style and modern style of aviation watches for actually very low prices. Aquatico, Spinnaker, I reviewed the REC. It's gonna be a competitive option to this one. Aqua C, SWC, Luxmark. And what's the one I have on the table here? Storm, this one right here. Ton of others too, I'm just you know getting started. The downside to micro brands is they are not widely available. You just can't go out and buy this watch, at least when I looked subject to change in Amazon. You might be able to get an eBay, but maybe you might have to go to the Phoebus website. When I bought these, I searched for coupon codes. I did not find any, so I had to pay pretty much full price. Wah, wah. That's the way it goes, man. And I try to get these watches out in a timely fashion, but you know, a lot of the audience do not like the watch reviews. They hate them. Uh, the elite do, you guys, by the way. I keep cranking them out, but point being is if they were devoured, I would spit out like 10 watch reviews in a span of probably 14 days. I could do that. No problems. Yep, each one about 20 minutes long, or thereabouts, depending on the watch. Micro brand though, probably you'll have to go to the Phoebus website. There are different variations. Of course, I have two on the table. The beautiful blue version. I think this is a polished DLC coated one. 
the black version of the Reef Master by Phoebus. So I'll roll in some screenshots of some that may or may not be available. So all these micro brands will come out with a batch of the watch. And when they sell out, they may not bring that one back. So if you see a variation you like, you need to jump on it because it may not come back in the variation you want. It may have a completely different handset, a different bezel. The model altogether may be discontinued. Highly unpredictable. All the micro brands are actually in the even the major manufacturers are that way. You just don't know when they're going to discontinue something. So get it. If you like it, jump on it. I did say there's some rants coming on. Here comes one. I'm going to keep saying this in a lot of WRVs. Can we just get rid of boxes already? I mean, as far as watch boxes go, boxing, uh, they're cool. I mean, this is padded nylon. It's very similar to the AV8 brand, micro brand style watches. They have like OD nylon, really cool box as far as boxes go. But what do we do with these? We keep them if we sell the watch. That's correct. We don't store them in there. I don't. If you have a sizable watch collection, all the boxes are different. They take up a different amount of space and all of them take up a lot of space. Look at this one. I never do unboxing videos. I think they're silly. They're just dumb. There's instructions, warranty card, blah, blah, blah on there. I, if it was up to me, you would have this watch come to you in bubble wrap and some rubber bands. And you could put the instructions in there, done. Yeah, you know, just put like a, a printout of an ocean wrapped around it to make the guy feel like he's uh, getting a dive watch. But I mean, there you go, mini rant. I just get rid of boxes. They're, they take up so much room. Another mini rant coming about this watch specifically is that, dang son, it's really hard here in the studio to film it. There is so much reflection coming off this domed sapphire crystal on the Phoebus Reef Master, it's pretty much impossible for me to eliminate it with my current setup. I mean, if I turn it like that, I can. You can see it, but if I go straight on, you're gonna see the camera, the lighting setup, probably my ugly face here and there. The good news is I have some outdoor footage. I'm gonna roll in liberally to this WRV, check it out. And it was actually me attempting to do the entire WRV outside. Boy, was that a waste of time. I spent like two hours trying to get the right takes. Too much noise. Helicopters, jets, cars crashing, gerbils chirping. Do gerbils chirp? Cats meowing, dogs barking, people yelling at each other, cars driving by. Dang, I shouldn't have done it in the McDonald's parking lot. Anyways. I just gave up and brought it indoors. I got outdoor footage I'm gonna show you. And the sunshine will really show and make the colors pop. I really like how they look in the out of doors. They have great loom, we're gonna talk about that. They're covered in 15 layers of Super Luminova, I guess BGW9, whatever that is, I guess it's good. It glows great. And it's just one of the many upgrades on this watch. But a rant is as follows. If you're gonna AR coat your domed sapphire crystal put it on the outside too bro R really a lot of reflections perhaps less of a factor as you wear the watch because again we're in kind of an artificial fluorescent studio environment there you go I, I prefer to have a flat crystal i'll bring in the storm again this is an aqua pro titanium much bigger dive watch uh, i got this from england actually and it's actually not titanium it's a stainless steel case much bigger watch which i actually like i'll talk about that Notice a flat crystal though, less reflections. Not sapphire, mineral crystal. I just coated it with my armor suit material. Go check out my video on how to do crystal protectors. You won't care if you have a sapphire crystal if you use my technique. Yeah, I don't know why people make such a big deal about having a domed sapphire crystal. They're like, oh, it's got a domed sapphire crystal. Like, who cares? Uh, that's, that's me, mini rant. More on the way, no doubt. All right, so a lot of great things about this watch. Again, I'm gonna roll in the footage from the outside. I'm gonna start off with the hands and the dial. That's what the Phoebus Reef Master gets right, right out the gate. It is super legible, super legible, high contrast. More and more, I'm not putting up with goofy hands. Cathedral hands, count me out. Tudor style of hands, count me out. Rolex style of hands, count me out. I hate them. There you go, there's a strong opinion for you. I just don't like them. I like simple, clean, easy to read hands. It's been that way for a very, very long time. Well, two years at least. 
and I search out watches that feature this, and that's what led me to the Phoebus Reefmaster. Look at the hands. Oh my goodness, they are, they are almost perfect. Now, they would be perfect if they were about two millimeters longer each one. The hour's hand, the minute's hand, second's hand is fine. They're all white, covered with Superluminova again. Very straightforward, kind of a sword design. I, I just really love the hands, but, but they're a little bit stubby. The reason I would like them to extend further out into the case is as follows. Visual presentation. When you have hands that go further out to the chapter ring, it makes the watch look bigger than it really is. I am an anti-fan, is that even a word, of the small face syndrome on dive watches. And I have discussed this a lot. Let's see really quick how big the effective face is on the Phoebus Reefmaster, more or less. 32 millimeters. Now that's not tiny, it's not. I've had worse, like 30. I think some of the Seikos I reviewed are like 30. That's because of the bezel which takes up room, I get it. And it's a relatively small case size for me. Maybe not for you. I'm not gonna measure it on camera, but it is 42 and a half millimeters, not counting the crown across, 14 and a half millimeters thick, 48 millimeters lug to lug. We have downed, downturned lugs to fit on smaller wrists. 42 millimeters for me guys at this point in my watch career is about the smallest I will go. Apparently there's a small watch trend coming back on, so say other reviewers. I don't know if I really buy it and count me out on that trend. I'm a seven and a half inch wrist guy. Uh, I like a bigger watch. 42 millimeters for me is a little bit too small. I did contact Phoebus as a customer and said, hey, are you ever gonna come out with a 45 millimeter Reefmaster? And the answer is definitely not, <laughs> in so many words. I think it will sell better, I can't speak, at this size. So 42 millimeters fits a wide variety of wrists. I think a lot of guys will say, hey, it's just right. Let's take a look at it on my seven and a half inch wrist, non-strapped. Nothing fancy, that is perfect. Why would you want a bigger watch than that? Uh, it's not bad. I'm not gonna say 42 millimeters is tiny, it's not. It's just about right, but I prefer a 45 to 46 millimeter dive watch. I'm gonna show you some examples. Oh, that blue, dudes, that is awesome. Uh, I do prefer the blue between these two variations, and one reason is, is it presents bigger on the wrist. When you have a lighter colored bezel, a lighter colored face, you have the white hands, it looks bigger than it actually is. Anytime you go with a dark bezel, dark face, dark strap, it looks smaller than it is, visual illusion. Back to the hands though, ooh, I love them. Yeah, they should be a couple millimeters longer than they are. And one thing I love about the hands on the Reefmaster is that they don't have segments in them. They're just pure white. They're not painted black or gold on the exterior or the outlining. Now, sometimes this can be awesome. I'm gonna show you a spinnaker where I think it's awesome in its execution. Sometimes it can be off and distracting. And you can lose some legibility. You just gather a lot more noise in the face, says me. Now, it's not that I always am opposed to noise or a busy face. I mean, my daily wear for today is the excellent Casio GG1000 Mudman. A lot of noise going on on that dial, right? But I like it. Notice the hands though. You don't lose legibility with the GG1000. Here's some of that segmenting I'm talking about. See how they're segmented a little bit? Instead of just a pure solid coloration, not a showstopper, it's a minor quirk. The GWG1000 gets it more right. They look like this. They're solid white, maybe solid tan, maybe solid light orange, depending on the variation of the Master of G, GWG1000 Mudman by Casio. I reviewed this one. It is a dive watch, dive proven by myself. Go check out the review. I may put it in card right now. And look at this strap, dudes. Oh, that is not a Casio strap. No, it comes from a Smale Tactical Watch, a Casio Mudman homage, which I give away to TMPers all the time because it's such an awesome watch. Here comes one of those side shows I'm talking about. <laughs> we'll get back to this one in a second. This is a great watch. I really, really love it. I love the handset. Notice that. So this one has aqua coloration coming out of it, Arabic numerals in color matched fashion along with the strap. I mean, just for a fashion statement, this is a beautiful watch. Use my Amazon link below. 
Uh, hopefully this coloration's still there. It's like $20, $25, this watch. Positive LD, LCD display in this one. But it is an homage. It's not Casio quality. It's not waterproof down to 200 meters. It's not solar powered, no ABC. Basic, basic timing functions. A little bit hard to set. It's mostly about the look, the Mudman look. An intro to a genuine Mudman. But what I'm telling you now is you can take this strap off and put it on your genuine Mudmaster. I said Mudman, that's pretty funny. Mudmaster. That's what I did. This comes off a smale. It's an orange. You just take a screwdriver, pry this out. These are fake screws. Pry them out. They're friction in there. They work great. They don't come loose. They don't fail. And then you just push them back into your Casio Mudmaster after you've taken your strap off. Look at a video online that shows you how to take the strap off. It's pretty easy. Now I have all the straps in the world for my genuine Casio. Oh, getting distracted. Straps really change the whole nature of a watch. But the, we're talking about noise, the busyness of dials, and most specifically the hands. Yeah, there's a lot going on here. The mode, busy, two LCD displays, busy, big raised markings, busy, not so busy, clean. More and more, I like a clean presentation, at least with a pure analog piece like the Phobos, Phoebus, Phoebus, uh, Reefmaster, however you want to say it. Hands are near perfection. There's a second hand right there for you. See its registration, how it's going around. The perfect markings on the dial. So clean. It is a sandwich dial. Luminova applied on the underneath layer. Really love the dial. By the way, some guys are not liking the octopus logo on the Phoebus, Phoebus, Phoebus Reefmaster. I love it. It's very oceanic. This is a dive watch. Also on the crown, there's the octopus. Dude, why not? Why would you not want that? It's great branding, I think. Now, you might make a case against the name. I mean, anytime you have to look up the pronunciation of a name, kind of tedious. Yeah, and there's going to be all types of variations of how people say that name. Um, that aside, though, the Octopus logo, I have no problems with at all. There's the case back, by the way. Very nice. So it's a variation of polishing and sand casting, I would presume. Screw on case back. Seiko NH35A movement with both hand winding and hacking. Quick set date. Totally excellent. No crown guards. Screw in. I love the NH35 movement. I have warmed up a lot to auto watches within the last couple years. Uh, I still love quartz watches. I like their low maintenance. I like that they're always right on when you strap them on, you don't have to set them. But I, here comes another mini rant. I don't get the big to-do about calibers of movements. Holy cow. I watch some reviews and they'll go off with numbers and calibers and movements and i just don't get it it's a total second cool thing hey is the movement accurate yes is it durable yes does it have an adequate power reserve yes end of discussion i don't i don't care what caliber it is no exhibition case back here to see anything it is a dive watch i have no problem with that i don't get it though and i'll probably rant about that till the end of time about all the caliber elitism it count me out is it reliable yeah Functional, yeah, good enough. But again, remember where I'm at as a reviewer, mostly. $300 or below. That's where I live as a reviewer. I might go above that once in a while. I generally am well below that, about 150 or less, because you can get so many freaking awesome watches for that. Yes, okay, dial covered. How about the bezel? 120 click, let me show you this black version right here. 120 click, ceramic inlaid bezel. I love the coloration of these, not blue, but aquamarine Arabic numerals on both the sandwich dial and also the bezel. Real positive action. Unidirectional, of course. Didn't really test the sandproofness of this. Dude, I think I want to leave it right here so I bug all the OCD types. Why? To put it at the 12 o'clock position, Nutton. It's bugging me. Nope, it's staying right there. I do that all the time when I'm wearing it though. If I'm timing something, I was like, oh, I need to put that at 12 o'clock position. I don't always do that. I'll just leave it wherever. Whatever. Oh my gosh, that fancy, you're driving me crazy. 
15 minute increment increments there. Let's look at the profile of the bezel. Low profile, really nice cut knurling. I'm more and more picky about this. I like cut knurling. I'm gonna show you a competitive offering, kind of. It's also a micro brand. It's been out of production for some time. I had to go searching for this watch for about a year before I could find it. And it is the most excellent county com.com Maritech SR1 unbranded military dive watch. Wearing my silver, orange, and black NATO. This is a big mamma jamma. It's like 46 and a half millimeters. That is AR coated. It is also a dome sapphire crystal, double dome, but it's AR coated on both the outside and on the inside, unlike this watch. About the same price when it came out, I think. I bought this one used off eBay because that's the only way I could get it. But look at the bezel, low profile, super sharp, cut knurling. Really nice action on the SR1. That's one reason I wear gloves in my tabletop review to demonstrate how to turn the bezel. It might be hard, maybe not so much, it just depends, but that's a perfect bezel, perfect. Let's compare the size of these two watches, by the way, this is fun. So I'm going to get this black version against a Meritech SR1. They don't look too much different, right? Right there in that presentation, but watch on the wrist. So here comes SR1, dudes. Oh, I like that. This is the kind of watch I love. I just love that. Seven and a half wrench, uh, wrenches. Seven and a half inch wrists is what I have, of course. Maritech SR1, good luck finding them. They're, they're out there, but just not a lot of them. I don't think they ever produced that many. Completely unbranded, by the way. I think it was a military contract and they sold the overrun through county.com. Such a cool watch. I don't know if I'll review it separately. Maybe I will. It's just gonna be really hard to find. And then here's the black one on wrist. Not bad, but it's definitely smaller. Definitely. So. This is, again, my preferred size. This is a 46 and a half, I think. This is, oh, well, like one of my all-time favorite dive watches. It really is. See, in the lug spacing, <clears throat> just about right for my wrists. Now, if you have six and a half inch wrists, this would not work for you. This one would, however. So there's a bezel, really nice execution on that. It comes with two bands. The Phoebus Reefmaster, you see what they call a crazy horse strap a simple black leather strap made in China. The whole watch is made in China, which to me these days means it's excellent. I see better quality coming out of China these days than I do Switzerland. I've had some German and Swiss watches fail on me. Quality problems, accuracy problems. I've seen no accuracy problems with a Phoebus Reefmaster. I'm only losing about five seconds a day. That's pretty excellent. Nice strap though, lined. Simple black variation, and I do like running a leather strap on dive watches. I think it's phenomenal. The black allows the face color to pop better. I think what would look really sick on this Phoebus is a blue NATO of some sort that has the same variation of blue running either down the middle or the sides. That would be super cool. But the strap comes with it, good quality. Got the Phoebus logo on the stainless steel buckle. Double keepers, not bad. Also, we have an ISO frame that comes with it. So it's a silicone ISO frame strap for water operations. I actually like these, the ISO frames are cool. A lot of ventilation and a lot of adjustability. Also with the Phoebus logo right here on the clasp. Double keepers. And also check this out, it's notched to keep it. So this keeper right here will be kept by the notches right here. So that is great attention to detail as is the case on the Phoebus Reefmaster. No drilled through lugs, unfortunately. I would like that for quick strap changes, but no big deal. I always do it from the backside so I can hide any scratching that I might produce. Here's the case, look, details. Both satin and polished surfaces. You can see the polished facet right here. Very compact lugs on the Phoebus Reefmaster, which again will allow it to fit on a variety of hand sizes, I should say wrist sizes. That loom pip right here is pretty excellent too. I forgot to mention that, very Flieger-like. We're gonna look at the loom here in just a second. So nice job on the case. Here's the black colored one. Again, peering smaller. 
Say in comment which of these two colorations you like best. If if I were to guess, knowing you guys, I would say you're probably going to say the black variation of the Reef Master. At least between these two, that's what you're going to like best. Now right, let's go for the loom, dudes. Coming out of uh, the pocket, as always, is my very much used. I have a ton of these S20 Olight. The S2 is the same thing, maybe even better. This was out of doors here uh, about an hour ago, so it probably has some residual loom. Uh, if this doesn't show it adequately, I'll just put in a loom shot. The loom on this is phenomenal. Again, Super Luminova BGW9. Oh crap, I forgot I had that open. I have a window open where I'm at. That is still pretty excellent though, look at that. Oh my gosh, that is great loom. Great loom. I, I think that's doing a great job of picking it up. And what I like about it is the numbers on the bezel are even loomed. The underlayer of the sandwich dial all loomed. The 9, 12, 6 o'clock loomed. Uh, I just, I'll give the loom on this an A. Notice the hands are kind of blue and then the markings are green, Super Luminova. And you have even loom on the graduated minutes on the bezel. How often do we see that? Not very. I mean, it'll dominate the spinnaker in that fashion, which I don't think has any loom at all on its markings, although I love the spinnaker. Uh, and I'm gonna show you it right now. The green version is one I'm gonna show you. Wearing a NATO camo strap right now. I'm just charging up real quick. I have dove this one, it worked great. So there's a spinnaker wreck in olive drab green. Real nice competitive option, but notice it's not a ceramic bezel, it's an anodized bezel, and it doesn't have the loom that the Phoebus Reefmaster does. Still an awesome watch. And let's look at this real quick. I haven't shown you this officially. I did dive it. This is a Spinnaker Rec, another great micro brand, reviewed separately. Check out my review. Look at that case, so how cool that is. A very vintage style dive case, antiqued, kind of scratched up. Notice this, by the way, we're not getting that many reflections. Hmm, interesting is what I was saying. So this does not have a sapphire crystal. Slightly domed, not really. It's wearing my crystal protector on it. But, dude, compared to the Phoebus, it's like night and day. Look at all, all the reflections. <laughs> it's like, oh my goodness. You can hardly see the Phoebus. Again, in a studio environment, I'm not going to review this one again. Uh, this is one of those that has outlined hands, but it works because it's against a dark background. Although we have an arrow tip here, I don't mind it because it works. Really cool coloration. Again, look at that camo NATO strap. Dude, that makes me happy when I put it on. I'll say this though, the Phoebus Reef Master has more quality than this one because you're getting a sapphire crystal, better illumination for sure. Let me turn this right here for my OCD types. For sure, uh, you get two straps with it. So you're getting a leather strap and an isoframe silicone strap for about the same price. To me, that is better value than the spinnaker. I uh, still love the spinnaker, still highly recommended. You might find it for less than this one. Uh, Size-wise, they're gonna be very similar, although this one is slightly bigger in case, which makes me happier. Here's what it looks like on my wrist, more or less. And that's what it looks like falling on the table. Ooh, that's better. Spinnaker Wreck in green, antiqued. I was gonna send this one back, but it is a cast member. There you go, very cool. Would I buy this watch, the Phoebus Reef Master? Yes, absolutely, I would. Very cool watch, super high value for all the reasons I've talked about. Uh, Luminova, two, two year warranty, I forgot to mention that. Seiko NH35A movement, sandwich dial, Double dome sapphire crystal. I ran it about that a lot. Uh, totally. Other options might be the, oh my gosh, I love this watch. Before I wrap it up, told you this would be feature length. Coming up on 30 minutes, the Deep Blue Master 1000. Okay, dudes, I'm just going to say it. This is one of my all time favorite dive watches ever. And yes, it is a micro brand. It is a larger watch. Look at this. Oh my gosh, that is so beautiful. That is the silver version wearing a Barton canvas red two-piece strap. 
quick detachable. I bought this in Amazon. Both of them to, actually, the watch and the strap. So this is a micro brand you can buy in Amazon. I have not officially reviewed the Reef, uh, the Reef Master, the Master 1000, but it's coming. Here it is in Pepsi coloration with a two-piece Zulu strap. Okay, let's compare it against the Phoebus Reefmaster. It dwarfs it, which makes me happier. Yeah, both of them are awesome. I mean, it's gonna be a high likability scale, just a couple mini rants there. I didn't talk about the date window, by the way. It's pretty much illegible. High reflectivity and you know, pretty much useless date window. Quite an operation, high quality. That's about all I can say bad about the Reefmaster. I probably will not review any more of their watches. This is my favorite one in their lineup, but that's all subject to change. If this one gets a ton of views, eh, I might be motivated to go out and get one. Nothing fancy watch show, dive watches. See you on the waves, or in my case, under the waves.